A very good morning to all of you. I, Akriti Kumari, on behalf of CII, would like to welcome everyone to the CII series of webinars on Industry 4.0 for India. The topic for today's session is why a quality culture is more important to Indian companies than ever and how to create one. The session is brought to you by our partner, Hexagon. I would like to welcome our esteemed panelists for today's session, Mr. Aditya Chaudhary, Director of Sales, Hexagon Smart Manufacturing Intelligence Division. Aditya is the Director of Sales for Hexagon Smart Manufacturing in India. In his role, he is responsible for establishing Hexagon's unique and pioneering quality management solutions within the manufacturing ecosystem of the country. Aditya is a seasoned business leader and digital evangelist who has rich experience in guiding companies adopt new technologies for business transformation. Through his consultative approach, Aditya has helped some of the top manufacturers create and execute their digitalization roadmap. For his contribution towards customer success in the field of digitalization, he has been recognized of recognized as Rockwell Automation Olympian and Dassault Systems President Club member. Prior to joining Hexagon, Aditya has worked with Rockwell Automation, Dassault Systems and NSS in various capacities. Aditya holds a B.Tech degree from National Institute of Technology, REC, Calicut. A very warm welcome to all the participants joining us today. Before we begin with the session, I would request the participants to post their questions in the Q&A section. The questions will be taken up at the end by our panelists one by one. I would also request other panelists to kindly keep themselves on mute when they are not speaking. So without any further ado, let's begin with today's session. I would request Aditya to kindly begin. Hello, good morning everyone and uh, thank you Akriti for this uh, very generous introduction. All right, so, you know, as uh, Akriti mentioned, uh, the topic of our discussion today is um, why is quality culture more important uh, to Indian companies than ever and how to create one? Now, here in this title, I just want to highlight a few things. And uh, these things I'll try to answer through my presentation during the course of next one hour. <clears throat> The first aspect is what is quality culture all about? And most importantly, why create it for Indian companies and why now? Right. So these are the three important aspects which I would um, you know, want to uh, you know, answer through my discussion today. Well, you know, before we launch into the topic, you know, I'll just like to spend a quick two minutes on uh, my company, Hexagon. So Hexagon is a European a company headquartered in Stockholm in Sweden. Uh, we are global leaders in autonomous connected ecosystems. Um, we are a team of close to 21,000 employees across the globe and out of which 2,700 are based out of India. We are uh, spread across 50 countries and we provide solutions related to productivity and quality improvement to our customers. And, you, and as you can see in the slide, we serve a variety of industries right from manufacturing to mining, agriculture, mobility, building infrastructure, and even smart cities. All right, so let's talk about, you know, what is first of all a culture? Right. And when I say culture, it's not the culture in the uh, sociology sense, but in the corporate sense. Now, as some of the thought leaders have put it, some problem with probably navigating on the slides. Okay. Culture is defined as the operating system which runs a company. Now, typically, we say that you know we do certain things in this company. So this basically answers the question why certain things are done in a certain company in a certain way. Because as I said, culture is an operating system which defines this. All right, so now let me just uh, answer this question for you. 
why create a culture for Indian companies, a quality culture for Indian companies now? Why is the opportunity now, right? So a lot has changed in the post pandemic world, right? The first thing which you would have witnessed is that there was a huge disruption in the global supply chain, right? And some of this disruption was, of course, due to the lockdowns due to pandemic. But there were also other geopolitical reasons for that. Well, that's not the topic of uh, today's debate. But it is a reality today that the world has started to realize that it's very important to have sourcing from not just one country, but multiple countries. And this is where India presents, you know, a unique option to the global manufacturers that they can look at a country which is which which has a good infrastructure which has got a good domestic market and a reasonably trained labor market the second aspect of opportunity in india today is that we are already a 3.1 trillion dollar economy as per the survey of 2021 and 22 and we are also the fastest growing economy in the world right now with 8.5 percent gdp growth which is forecasted for this year in fact imf has pro uh, projected even higher growth rate which is close to nine percent and the third opportunity for us is government's continuous push on atmanirbhar bharat you would have seen that in yesterday's budget speech there was almost 68% of capex for defense was reserved for uh, defense procurements from Indian companies. Now, this is unprecedented in India because India for so long has been considered as one of the largest importers of defense equipments in the world. And by mandating that 68% of that is going to come from Indian manufacturer, it's a huge opportunity for us. By the way, Atmanirbhar Bharat is not just limited to defense procurements. There are other aspects of Atmanirbhar Bharat as well. And some of that you would have seen with uh, the, the huge, the world's largest vaccination drive, which India ran uh, last year. And both the vaccines which were used in India, Covaxin as well as Covishield, were primarily manufactured in India. All right, so let's look at you know India's position in the global manufacturing community, right? Now, this is a very prestigious survey which was um, conducted some time back by A.T. Kearney. Now, A.T. Kearney is uh, one of the most reputed consulting organizations in the world. And uh, they conducted a survey um, talking about how manufacturing in India can become globally competitive. So they used an operational assessment framework. Now in this framework, there are of course uh, multiple parameters and they came up with something called as a composite score. score. Now one thing to note here is that India currently lies in the fourth quintile, whereas China lies in the third quintile. But the important thing to note here is that most of the Chinese companies have got a very similar composite score as compared to India, where the composite scores tend to dip when we go to the later half of the fourth quantile, which means that one of the parameters, or rather, you know, a few of the parameters out of this uh, composite score are really doing badly for India. Now look at, uh, Western Europe, United States, and Korea, you would see that, you know, most of them have got a fairly high composite score. And you can see that many of these Chinese companies are tending towards moving to the second quantile as well, right? Now, one of the important aspects which A.T. Kearney highlighted in this composite score was quality, right? And that probably was one of the reasons where the composite scores of Indian manufacturers was going down. Now let's look at another graphic. Now in this graphic, 
and by the way, this this graphic is is courtesy um, uh, Mint, which is a leading business daily, and uh, this data has come from uh, United Nations database for trade statistics. Now, one important thing to see here in this the first graphic is that in 1997, India was exporting goods, 9% goods, which required advanced engineering and manufacturing. In 2015, which is a period of about 18 years, although we doubled our share of exported material, which requires uh, advanced engineering, but look at what Vietnam did. It's a huge growth, 5% to 29%. And look at what China did. China, although they started with a high base, but currently, if you see, more than one third of the material which they export requires advanced engineering. Now look at the second graphic. In 1997, the global market share of advanced engineering product, India's market share was just 0.1%, and China was 2.5%. Now look at in 2015, India is at 1%, Although it's a huge increase, but still it's just minuscule in the global market community. And look at China, 15.2% is their market share now. Now, the third graphic talks about how does the advanced market import products from emerging markets like India and China. So in 1997, China was or rather, you know, uh, European Union was importing only 1% of advanced engineering products from China. In 2015, it became 6.6%. India was 0.1% and now it's just 0.5%. Now, this these graphics highlight one thing, which is that the reason our share in the global advanced engineering market is low because all these products require very high precision quality coming in. So we should really worry about the quality coming in from the Indian customers, sorry, Indian uh, companies. So here's my first poll question. And uh, Akriti, my request is if you can flash this poll question uh, to all our uh, audience. So the first poll question is, do you think that there is a culture of quality in your company? All right, so the time limit is about one minute. So 42 seconds already gone. Let's give another 15 seconds for people to respond. All right, so I'm sure you would have recorded your responses to this poll question. Now let's move on. So, so, so far, you know, I have uh, helped answer two questions that why there is a necessity to create a culture of quality. And the second question which I have answered is, sorry, this was not the full question. Okay, this is the response, sorry. And the second question which I have uh, tried to answer is, why do it now? Now let's look at how do we create this, uh, you know, quality uh, culture in our organization, right? Now, so here are my views. So in my opinion, the things which are required to create a culture of quality are these four. The first is people, of course, because that's where, you know, everything starts from. Second is vital views. I'll talk about that in detail in my next slides. The third is process. And the fourth one is technology. Now you would have noticed that I have used bidirectional arrows for all these four elements. The reason is that 
one enhances the other. And then I'll show you with some examples uh, which uh, we have from some of some of our esteemed customers that how um, technology has, has helped uh, creating a culture of quality, how, you, how vital fuse have helped and vice versa. All right, so let's talk about people first. Now, participation of people in quality processes is extremely crucial and it has been recognized in various quality techniques which are available today to the practitioners uh, in this area. In fact, uh, TQM speaks about uh, participation of leadership and talks about that, you know, uh, the training should be given to um, all the functions in the value chain. They're right because unless everyone is aware that, you know, their mission is to create a quality product, obviously nothing is going to come true. And but in, unfortunately, most of the companies, quality is typically delegated to the quality assurance and quality control department. Now that's a huge mistake because unless Quality is democratized across the entire value chain, which starts from product design to supply chain, manufacturing, logistics, sales, and even post sales. You would not be able to create a culture of quality. Right. Now let's talk about what is this a vital few. Now I'll take an analogy for that. When we were all young, we used to play games. And in most of the games, we would do a scoring, right? And you would also recall that how boring the game would become when no one would pay attention to the scores. But the moment you pay, start paying attention to the scores, things start to become more fascinating, right? So vital fuse are those numbers are, are rather those KPIs and very few KPIs which can produce 80% of the results. So it's the 2080 rule, which is basically vital fuse are those 20% KPIs which can have 80% impact on your quality. Right? So that's the first aspect of vital fuse. The second aspect, as I said, is the scorekeeping. So if in our organizations, if we are daily shown the scores of quality, the KPI of quality, obviously, you know, it will motivate us more than anything else. Now, this is one example which I have shown where for a manufacturing line, OEE has been displayed on the shop floor as an unknown. Now, imagine uh, tracking other uh, quality KPIs you know, what effect would it have on employees? Because ultimately, if you do well, you are motivated to do even better. Now, some of the examples of uh, typical vital fuse or matrices which are tracked by business leaders are as follows. So the first one is uh, defects, which is measured in PPM or DPM. The second one is on-time complete shipment, which is OTCS. The third one is cost of poor quality. The next is scrap, corrective action and preventive action, which is kappa. And the last one is return material authorization. The third aspect of creating a culture of quality is the process. Now, when I had joined the corporate world, I just used to hate processes. Because I thought that, you know, processes are simple waste of time. Why should we follow any processes? But then as I grew older and my experience in the corporate world grew, I started to realize that processes are necessary evil to scale up. Right? And I realized that unless we have processes, we will not be able to work with a large team and ask everyone to look at a common goal and in a common direction. And quality is one area which is full of processes. And I'm sure, you know, my colleagues who have joined in from the quality department would be familiar with some of these acronyms which I have put on the slide. 
like APQP, um, FMEA, PPAP, uh, statistical process control, course, continuous quality improvement, Six Sigma, et cetera. Right. So processes are important, but processes start to become burden when they have to be, they, they become tedious to follow. Now, in most of the companies, processes are typically uh, created in an Excel sheet and they are floated around in an organization through emails. No one has a control on the right version. No one has a control on you know, what others are filling. There's no visibility to that. And that is a big you know, hindrance for creating culture of quality. So unless the processes are you know, uh, streamlined, are made visible to all the employees, it really you know, uh, solves any purpose. And the last aspect of creating a culture of quality is technology. Now, technology has got two facets. One is the automation. And yes, um, you know, automation does improve quality, but it rarely helps in creating a culture of quality because putting machines can definitely, you know, uh, do a job for you in, in terms of precision manufacturing, but it only acts as one element of uh, technology and it's more of a process addition than creating a culture of quality. But the but the aspect of technology which really helps in creating that culture of quality is establishing a quality management system. Now, in today's hyper-connected world, you know, the employees want access to all the critical data on their laptops. They want it on their uh, mobile devices, their tabs, and wherever they want to go, they want to have access to that, right? So it's, it becomes very important that whatever technology framework we create for, for quality is accessible on all the devices and at all locations. All right, so this brings us to our second poll question. The question is, is there an ongoing initiative in your company towards improving the product quality? Simple yes and no. So forty seconds have elapsed 20 more seconds for you to respond to this question all right okay so we'll move on Okay, so let's just uh, understand what is this uh, quality management system. Now, a quality management system should have following aspects. Right? The first aspect of quality management system is document control. And I'll talk about each of these elements in detail in my subsequent slides. The second aspect is training. The third aspect is its ability to handle non-compliance. The fourth aspect is audits. Kappa and quality control. All right. So, in quality, document control, process, and audits are three things which are of extreme importance. Right. Now, my colleagues from you know, quality departments would realize that. Uh, Typically, you know, in, in quality, there is a, there's a ton of documentation which has to be maintained. And that's where, you know, the first aspect of QMS is the document control. Okay. 
So, <clears throat> so let's look at what are the uh, business challenges associated uh, with document control. Now, since there is a ton of documentation which needs to be completed for quality, this first of all is always a mess because currently in most of the companies, these documents are being managed um, through Windows file servers. And, uh, you know, these are distributed through emails. And that, first of all, creates a huge problem in terms of the, the version control. And uh, also there are multiple sources of the same document sometimes. And also when you have to find certain things, some document, it's a nightmare. Because just imagine a company which is which has about say 5,000 employees and out of which, you know, um, 500 are dedicated towards quality in, in addition to the other department people. Just imagine, you know, how much documentation is going to be created and how do you find that documentation? Companies have tried to solve this problem through SharePoint, <clears throat> but they have not been um, very successful because first of all, SharePoint doesn't have a workflow which you can control, right? So the poor documentation can lead to, um, you know, training issues, which means wrong training given or, you know, wrong or training given on a wrong version of documentation, etc. cetera. Uh, increase of number of incidents, increase in number of complaints, and also it affects CAPA timelines. So what if, you know, you were able to control document um, for quality in an automated way, right? So one thing, you know, we have realized uh, in our experience dealing with several companies is that is that the moment you increase the ease of use there is an increased employee engagement to that tool and hence adoption of the culture so one thing this uh, qms system can do for you is to do the same which means increase the ease of use of document control it can manage the approval process for the document it can schedule reviews for you and also archive old records for audit purposes so the benefits of implementing document control in a QMS system is that it ensures accountability, it lowers the risk and enhances speed and quality of other processes. So here's my first customer example. Sorry, the uh, customer name is hidden here because of the picture. <clears throat> so this customer is uh, Polaris Laboratories. Now, Polaris Laboratories is a industrial maintenance service provider. Now, if you look at their job profile, their job is to advise their customers and also perform these industrial maintenance jobs for their customers. But quality is so vital for them because, you know, any maintenance operation gone wrong can actually have a huge implication in terms, even in terms of litigations uh, on, on their company. So they created a culture of quality uh, and especially in service delivery by implementing a QMS system, which was intuitive, which was flexible. And most importantly, since most of their employees are working on site, they needed mobility and they needed a system which can be accessed on their employees, mobile phones or tabs. So this system was able to engage their on field resources through uh, this automated QMS system and health, hence, you know, helped in creating a culture of quality. And the output of their exercise was there was almost a 40% reduction in time in looking for the right document. And that's a huge saving. And especially imagine a scenario where your on-field engineers have to find out an SOP and you're not, you're not able to find it. And with the help of technology, you can do it quickly. Now let's talk about another um, customer of ours, uh, which is Train Technologies. Now, many of you would have not heard their current name, which uh, um, happened only in 2018. Earlier, this company was called Ingersoll Rand. Now, Ingersoll Rand um, in India had a uh, has had a big division of power tools, but in 2018, they had uh, spun off the power tool division and their refrigeration 
uh, and air conditioning division is now called train technologies now train technology is a perfect example of crawl walk and run strategy uh, in implementing technology right so now train technology is very focused on customer quality but they really wanted to test that you know how would this technology work in their company which is almost 100 years old and already has got a culture so deep rooted that you know any technology intervention gone wrong can actually disrupt the whole operation so they wanted to be very careful so they started off with just one line and one product they looked at the success of that and then they expanded it to all their plants and implemented about 13 processes uh, of quality in that platform. Some of the processes for your reference are NCM, Kappa, SCAR, which is Supplier Corrective Action Report, internal audits, external audits, deviations, material escalation, change management, document control, PPAP, and few others. Now, through implementation of uh, the QMS, not only they were able to democratize the culture of quality across the organization, but they were also able to reduce their scrap and rework by 32%. And their overall warranty costs were down by 70%, which is approximately $10 million. That's a lot of saving, right? So it reduced their cycle time by up to 87% with 50% cycle time reduction on an average. One of their senior executive um, once commented in one of our events that through the implementation of a QMS system, they wanted to create a data superhighway. A data superhighway which would break the silos of the organization. So before the implementation of this technology, every department had only one or two KPIs for quality assigned to them. But after the implementation of technology, they were able to look at how their KPIs are affecting the overall product quality. And as I said, once you start keeping score of things, it motivates people to do even better. The next aspect of a QMS system is a training management. And I think all of you um, who come from manufacturing would know that, you know, uh, there is a TQM training uh, which is assigned to uh, some of the employees and every, you know, one year, six months, two year, depending on the job profile, they have to do this training, right? Now, one of the challenges uh, with this training management is uh, training is that uh, many of the times the material is not up to date. Now there have been situations that a new SOP has been created, but then that has not been adapted uh, in, in form of the new training material. So, so the new SOP is there because of some kappa, but then the material of training didn't get updated because there's no linkage, right? And the other issue is non-compliance. Um, people not completing training. The third is lack of visibility on current status and areas to focus on. So, so poor training can have huge effects on your product quality in terms of you know increased process timelines, low first time write rate, number of incidents, number of complaints, and failed inspections and audits. But some of the business impacts of implementing training management which is on the same platform as document control is that you know first of all you are always working on the right version of the training and without much user intervention so which means that if some documentation got changed because of some kappa action automatically it would start reflecting in the training training material as well um, the users can acknowledge uh, their training uh, completion and also get a virtual certification. And it or to the management, it gives the you know um, real time status of training for all their employees uh, on various quality aspects. So in terms of ROI uh, of training management, 
is that you can measure employee understanding. There are techniques to do that. Reduces users time to review material and train. Less time spent on day to day management of training. And process improvement. Um, which is Kappa and other incidents through better training training and ensures compliance. Now the third aspect is audit management. Now audits uh, in every company is dreaded. In fact, um, many of my customers um, I have been interacting for many years. They suddenly, you know, go into a shell for two to three weeks um, when a audit is coming in their plant. And I I would ask them, you know, why are you worried? They say, you know, it takes a huge amount of time for them to first of all collect the right data, and then in some cases even create that document because the documents itself are, are not created. And then, you know, there are various aspects for which they need to get prepared. So I, I used to always wonder that if quality is so integral to companies, why is audit management not automated? And this is what, you know, an automated QMS system focuses on solving this problem. So some of the business challenges which you would all appreciate with quality uh, audit management is that there is a complexity, a huge amount of complexity in finding the right documents. There are user errors. And findings and follow up is a huge nightmare. So when you do not automate audit management, obviously, you know, you will have to go into shell for two to three weeks and that's a lot of, lot of time wasted on non productive work. Missed inspection. Poor audit scores and components which go missing. Components of audit, I mean. So, an automated audit management can have a huge uh, impact. Because, first of all, an automated audit management provides visibility and control over the complete auditing process. It streamlines, it schedules, it assigns, and you know, uh, executes and reports the entire process to the senior management. It's an end-to-end -end management tool for audits. It's centralized, and most importantly, whatever findings of the audit are, you can act on them. So the benefits of an audit management to an overall organization is compliance management, continuous improvement, mitigation, time saving, employee satisfaction because they now know that you know they don't really have to slug uh, just to find the right document, and that kind of motivates people. So again, I'm coming back to the same theme that the moment you increase the ease of use of anything, any process, it increases adoption. And this is where technology plays a huge role in creating a culture of quality in organizations. My next example is a company called Plenty, and this is one of my most, most favorite um, examples. Now, Plenty is a very unique company. They are pioneers in vertical farming technique. Now, um, vertical farming techniques is a technique where you grow on the walls, in simple words, right? <clears throat> now, they claim that this technique uses 91% less water and 99% less land. And they also claim that their produce is pesticide free. And you don't even have to wash it before eating. That's their claim on their website, right? So, and since they are, they operate in an industry which is highly regulated, which is food. And this comes from the fact that, you know, there, there are huge uh, health and safety concerns related to uh, the food. So, audit becomes a key necessity, right? So, this is a company of about uh, 300 people. And when they thought of a QMS system, they had a very myopic focus that they wanted for audits because you know they would have random audits from the you know US uh, Food Administration and they would need to be prepared for that all the time. And by the way, they just had one person for quality at that time. So they started off with that myopic focus, but as they implemented the system in their company and gave the access of the system to 
most of their employees in their value chain, they started to realize that, of course, you know, they, they realized the benefit of implementing this, this QMS, a QMS system on quality as well as on audit compliance, but they also started to witness uh, growth in overall crop yield, which has a direct impact on their revenue. And they had an impact on their consistency of their produce, which again had a direct impact on their brand value. And since everyone was using the system, quality kind of became ingrained to the overall operations of that company. And hence, you know, again, an example where technology played a vital role in creating a culture for quality. And as you see that, you know, quality is not for compliance. It's also for increasing your revenue growth, establishing your brand and so on. Here's another um, customer of ours, which is uh, Avanos, um, which is into medical equipment. They implemented an automated QMS system which reduced their complexity um, of audits. It drove standardization across all 90 location of theirs. As an output, they had about half a million dollar of savings and 92% reduction of time saved required for audits. Right? And again, this is coming from a company which is in which operates in a heavily regular, regulated environment, which is uh, healthcare. My next aspect of a QMS system is CAPA. And uh, CAPA stands for Corrective Action and Preventive Action. All of you know who are associated with quality. Now, CAPAs are typically triggered when there is a non compliance which has happened. Now, the non compliance can come in from anyone. You know, it can come in from your customers, it, it can come in from your uh, manufacturing guys, it can come from your suppliers, anywhere, right? But the important thing is that once an SNNC alarm has been triggered, non-compliance alarm has been triggered, what do you do next is, is what CAPA dictates, right? It's a process that in future you should not you know, repeat the same mistake. And, if, and in effect, it reduces the uh, costs related to quality in the long run, right? So if you have an automated CAPA system, you can effectively measure you know, um, you know what has gone wrong, and then try to identify a root cause, and then try to fix it, and then ultimately implement it in your, you know, uh, trainings for your employees. Again, an example from the same customer, Evanos, who uh, implemented uh, our QMS system, and they and they realized an almost sixty percent reduction in time spent on Kappa from the time it is launched and to the time it is completed. The last aspect of the quality management system is quality control, right? Now, most of the processes I have spoken before this are quality assurance processes. Now, there's a slight difference between quality assurance and quality control. Now, quality assurance is a more proactive uh, method of maintaining the product quality and since it is proactive in nature it costs you less whereas quality control is a post facto analysis which you have to do and i would say both are important <clears throat> quality assurance as well as control but i would say a better focus on quality assurance means that your cost of quality is always under control now the challenges in quality control are that currently in many companies, the data for quality control is manually entered in Excel sheets. You can automate that today with Industry 4.0. There are methods and techniques to do that. Other thing is that currently there is no uh, analysis which is done on the Excel sheet data. You can do that today with data analytics. And the third is very hard to do a root cause, a cause analysis on manual data and do a corrective process. So today with uh, all the advances in Industry 4.0, you can do a completely automated data acquisition and analytics, which can help you to do process qualification, 
real time monitoring of various quality KPIs, statistical dashboards, uh, process control, process optimization, etc. Here's the last example of the day from my side uh, before I start concluding. Is uh, so this is an example from a, a startup company called Rivian, and their story story is also unique. Now this is a story where a company used quality for their go-to market. Can you imagine, right? Now, you know the senior execs of this company were were you know earlier working with uh, the automotive giants like Ford, General Motors, etc., and they knew that you know what could be the catastrophic effect of bad quality on a brand which is about to establish itself. So they decided that they would want to use quality as a differentiator for themselves in go to market. Now, Rivian, um, as some of you would know, is an EV truck manufacturer. And they realized that there is a huge gap in the market today, um, especially on these delivery vehicles that the last mile connectivity was missing. And that was expensive because most of these trucks were run by gasoline. So they said that, you know, why don't we um, attack into a market through EVs um, and, and kind of, you know, fill, fill that gap. So they used, um, you know, the culture of quality perfectly from day zero uh, in their company and said that, you know, we would want to have a QMS even before we roll out our first vehicle. Uh, they rolled out their first vehicle in September of 2021, which was just not too far from today. It's just, uh, you know, four months back, they have launched their first vehicle. And in November, they came up with uh, a very significant IPO. Again, it was a huge hit with, um, you know, various investors. Because the investors like the idea that how can quality be used for go to market. Now they assure their customers uh, quality vehicles and you know quick turnaround in terms of post sale services, etc. Everything is standardized in terms of their quality processes. Right. For record, um, uh, they recently backed a very significant order from Amazon, which is of about 1 lakh EV trucks spread over next 10 years. And yearly, Amazon will take 10,000 trucks for them. So uh, before I start concluding, this is the last poll question of the day. Is your company thinking of implementing a quality management system? Time limit is uh, one minute. Twenty seconds have gone. Thirty more seconds for you to answer. Ten more seconds. All right. All right. So, so here's a summary. Now, the quality management system, of course, helps you create that culture of quality, but it are, it has also got tangible benefit in terms of reducing the risk of non-compliance, streamlining operations, reduce the costs, and grow product revenue. I've given you some examples uh, of that in my discussion before. And here are some uh, some of the um, I should say improvements which have been reported by our customers. You know, almost fifty percent reduction in time spent on supporting external audits. You look at streamlining operation, thirty percent reduction in time spent in managing customer complaints. These are huge savings, right? 
and look at the right hand side companies who have implemented a qms system have reported a revenue increase of approximately one person and that can be huge right well this is my concluding slide uh, if you have answered that you know you are contemplating a qms system um, you can consider our qms system which is etq all the examples which i had shown in my uh, discussion today um, were customers of our product line etq uh, it's being provided by a company hexagon uh, so etq is a cloud-based platform um, which has got all these applications related to quality already built in and we do configure it for our customers because we realize that each company has got its own process so it's it's important that we tailor the solution to our customers unique requirements as well it comes with uh, core application sets um, starting from document control training management audit management kappa etc and then it has got specialized uh, process application sets like non-conformance handling kappa supply chain quality etc and as i said since this is uh, available on cloud it's accessible from your mobile devices from your laptop that can be accessed from your home office anywhere you are in the globe all right so with that um, i'm ready to take questions um, if you have any questions um, i would request that you know cii team to open the mics for our uh, viewers yeah thank you thank you aditya for such an insightful pre uh, presentation so i will read out the questions and uh, you can answer them. So as of now, I can see, we, and I would request the participants to post their questions in the Q&A sections if they have any. And uh, the first question I can see is from Mr. Karthi Kesan Nahar. He's asking, we have already implemented QMS, which answer to, okay, he was asking for that poll question itself, which answer to be selected in that case. <laughs> okay, so he has already done that. And, uh, we have one more question. We have a question from SK Rai. He's asking, what are the steps to be followed to build a culture in an organization? All right. So, Mr. Rai, you know, uh, as I had mentioned, um, of course, you know, uh, awareness in people is the most important step. Um, and that I've highlighted um, through my, you know, element of uh, quality culture which is people and the second aspect is that unless you give the power to people through technology and today you know technology is is so pervasive that whatever you do um, even in our personal lives if you see uh, anything we would want to do whether it is ordering food from zomato or swiggy or ordering something from amazon or looking at cricket scores news everything is, is available on mobile so unless we give the business tools to our uh, employees on mobile as well we'll not be able to sort of create a culture of quality so i would say um, you know people awareness technology process and identification of the vital fuse are the important most important things uh, we have next question from ms sujata sharma she is asking is it, is it able to integrate to with the data management system in sap and is there any real time entry of these data very good question um yes all most of our implementations i would say if not all are integrated to some sort of the erp or the other whether it is sap or oracle we, we do integrate with the erp systems and this is very important for us uh, we have next question from mr anil bhaskar he's asking what is the what is composite score he wants to know more about it what is okay. the composite score all right so you know um i would anyways be sharing this presentation with you know with cii and uh, through them you can get an access to these slides so uh composite score is is, is a score which uh, consists of uh, a broadly five parameters which starts from customer satisfaction next is quality third is profitability fourth one is agility and the fifth one is innovation and from these five elements, there are about 16 other elements um, which A.T. Kearney had tracked. So 
I have, I have given the link of uh, the, the paper which I have referred for this discussion. So um, once you get these slides, you can just uh, have a look at that paper. And this paper is very nicely written. It gives very positive recommendations on what companies should do, uh, Indian companies should do to improve their composite score. Uh, we have one more question from Mr. Uh, Vibhav Upadhyay. He's asking how QMS can be integrated with existing quality control system of company, or do we need to start from the beginning? Okay, very good question. So uh, we definitely uh, don't believe in that uh, old ad, ghar ke sare bal badal dalunga. Uh, we know that, you know, we have to work with uh, existing infra available. So, so yes, we do integrate with uh, your existing systems, uh, be it uh, document management system or be it your existing quality control systems. And we integrate with all of those. Okay, uh, I would request participants to post their questions that they have for me. Uh, Aditya, I don't see any new questions. Uh, okay, Sujata, uh, there is one question from Sujata again. She is asking how much is the cost. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and, and people you know, also want to know on any demo available. Yes, so, um, definitely both information are available, but um, obviously the cost aspect is uh, is is um, customer dependent, customer specific because we need to get into details on um what a particular customer would would want in terms of functionality and number of users and yes we have detailed demos for for this solution so so if you are interested then definitely you know we would reach out um yes sure ganesh you can connect with aditya later uh, post this webinar we will be happy to connect you with aditya and you can get a demo uh, i think we have one more question Yes, yeah, so this question is from Mr. Bhushan. He is asking to improve the quality in Indian industries. We need to understand the definition of quality. Please elaborate. Okay, so the question is, what is the definition of quality, right? Yes, yes. Okay, all right. Now, <clears throat> again, a very good question. Uh, again, a bit on the philosophical side. You know, um, the way quality is defined and if you look at some of these textbook definition they will say that you know uh, quality is something which um, satisfies customer requirement right but that is without context um, and i'll tell you why now um, because this statement has to be qualified with what is the cost a customer is willing to bear right so for example um, if you want to you know sell a maruti car um, to say upper middle class uh, person he would look at it at a, from a different lens and he'll say you know although it takes me from point a to point b it does my job but it has got this defect that defect so on and so forth but um, you know ask the same question from a person um, who is graduating from um, say two wheeler for him, it is solving his purpose. In addition, it is also giving him shade. It is giving him comfort. And for him, it solves all the problem because he can only afford that much. And he can only afford a certain price or rather willing to pay a certain price for that quality. So to me, quality is, uh, of course, meeting customers' expectations, customer requirement. But at the same time, we need to qualify that statement with what is the customer context. So this is what I would say the quality um, of product quality is. And uh, of course, you know, I'm willing to engage with you further uh, to have a deeper discussion on the, this topic. Um, so I understand that we have reached the end of uh, our session time. Um, so Akriti, if you have, uh, I mean, if you have one more last, one last question, I can take it, otherwise we can wind it up. As of now, I can't see any next question with us. Uh, so I would like to now close this session and thank you Aditya for such an insightful session sharing your views with us.
and i would also like to thank all the participants joining us today for making this session a success and if anyone really wants to connect with hexagon or with adepte they can write back to me at akriti.kumari@cii.in we will be very happy to connect you with the team thank you thank you everyone thank you everyone yeah.